this is, this is a big one, and I've seen this one really take a life of its own, that you want to do a nuclear first strike on the Muslim world. Right. right. Is that true, Sam? No. No, alas, it's not true. Okay. Um, I guess we'll but it, the video it, there, then. it was made, tr made true, uh, apparently, or at least to the satisfaction of many people, by Chris Hedges, who went around in uh, every stop on his book tour, you know, radio, television, uh, n print, telling people that this was, in fact, my position. Um, and many people, like you know, Glenn Greenwald and Rez Aslan and, and you know, your uh, old colleague, Cenk Uger, have, have, have um, reiterated this claim. There are a couple of passages in the end, my first book, The End of Faith, where I talk about how a certainty about paradise and about martyrdom as the best way to get there mm -hmm. just destroys the logic of r nuclear deterrence, of, of mutually assured destruction that we had that kept us more or less poised on the brink of a mutual annihilation with the Soviet Union for so many years. Uh, and I just pointed out what I think is an obvious fact, and still is an obvious fact, should be an obvious fact, and a very troubling one, that if you have a regime that has the, the that is the psychological equivalent of the 19 hijackers, mm -hmm. people who woke up in the morning wanting to fly a plane into a building. That is a regime who you can't, they're not rational actors. You can't, or if they're rational, it's, it, they're rational within a context of believing that they're going to paradise right. this way, right? So What's the it's, rational it, part of that? Yeah, it's, you know, well, but it's ra if you believe that, it's rational to blow up the world. You know, it's rational to hit the wall at 400 miles an hour. So... Um, this is not, so I pointed out the obvious fact that we have to avoid this circumstance at all costs, and there's no one who should be more cognizant of this problem than so-called moderate Muslims or, so, or secular Muslims or non-jihadist, you know, uh, Muslims. And um, we have to collectively find some path to a alternate, a future in which you don't have a true jihadist regime armed with long-range nuclear weapons. And all of those, so long-range is, is crucial. I mean, so you have Pakistan. Pakistan already has nuclear weapons. Do I think we should execute a nuclear first strike on Pakistan? No. Pakistan is not, first of all, a jihadist regime, and uh, though you know, they're one coup away from being uh, right. taken over by one, but they're also, they don't have uh, the warheads that can deliver these nukes to the, the capitals of Europe or to the U.S. Um, it's a very different circumstance. And um, so, yes, no, there's nothing that I say in that book that suggests that we should be nuking Iran, uh, you know. And, and so it's just, this is, uh, all I was talking about is how the kind of game theoretic logic mm -hmm. of nuclear deterrence that we lived, however precariously under, with the Soviet Union falls apart once you admit to yourself that it's possible that truly suicidal religious maniacs can get their hands on these weapons. And so all I was calling for is, is um, our awareness that that, is a, that really is a game changer, and we have to avoid that at all costs. Right, and you know, you said this was just a few passages in your book. It was yeah. literally about a page, right? It's like a, like a paragraph or two, yeah. Right, so yeah. when people have blown this up into, into some something that somehow this is like this massive idea that you have. Actually, I, a good friend of mine who I agree with on a lot of things and disagree on some other things, uh, he, what he says to me in relation to this is that you're laying the philosophical groundwork for a, a nuclear first strike. Well, I mean, the, the people respond to this passage as though I invented <laughs> nuclear weapons, right? <laughs> right. Like, or that I think they're a good thing. Right. Right? I'm, I'm just talking about the reality of our world. We have a, we have a nuclear policy. Right? We have a first strike policy. We have a so someone somewhere in a war room has has beaten out every choice point in terms of you know what are the circumstances where we would use nuclear weapons first? Mm -hmm. What are the circumstances where we would do where we would um, uh, where we would imagine that they're going to be used against us first and then have to preempt that? And, and uh, this has all been thought out in a Cold War context. We haven't had to worry about anyone else doing this to us. And when you're talking about other regimes like China or North Korea, there are, um, there's a plausible assumption that they're not suicidal, that, that everyone isn't eager to die, right. right? And now we are talking about a set of ideas, you know, jihadist eschatology, you know, just this, this idea that, that martyrdom is a real metaphysical principle and it's not only okay to die in the right circumstances, it's the best possible thing that can happen to you. 
Um, and that there really is, there's no such thing as innocent collateral damage because all the good people are going to go to paradise with you and, and they're just going to thank you for it, right? Yeah. Um, so you, there's nothing can go wrong and this world is just fit to be destroyed. Um, that is the ideology that you see in a happily a, a small minority of Muslims at this moment, but it is not an accident that these people feel this way because it's, it's a very plausible, literal reading of the text.